Okay, from the top. The Shin Megami Tensei series is probably my favorite franchise in gaming. I honestly feel like there isn't any other series that has such consistent quality in gameplay and story. So to celebrate achieving 1000 subscribers, I wanted to do something special to also celebrate this amazing series. But what do I have in mind? Well, the idea came to me when I was scrolling through YouTube one night. There are plenty of videos out there by talented creators that go over the best place to start, what the series is, and combat guides for specific games. But I noticed there wasn't really a guide out there for new players that goes over what the gameplay for the series is like as a whole. So today, I wanted to provide just that, and make a guide for new players on how to best get into the series from a gameplay perspective. This guide will cover the major SMT releases on modern platforms. These include Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne HD, Shin Megami Tensei 5 and Vengeance, Soul Hackers 2, Persona 3 Portable and Reload, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal. However, I will also be making references to SMT4 and Apocalypse, as well as the DDS duology and Strange Journey when appropriate. Seriously, Atlas, put these games on modern consoles. So with all that said, let's get started with the basics. The SMT series has always been known for well-crafted gameplay, even in the early dungeon crawling days of SMT 1 and 2. However, it wasn't until the release of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne where Atlas found a system that would define their games for the foreseeable future. Press Turns At the start of a battle, your team is given icons called Press Turns. Every time you take an action, it costs one of these Press Turn icons. However, by striking an enemy's weakness, or landing a critical hit, the press turn will not be consumed, and you'll be given an additional action to deal more damage. When played correctly, this can give the player a maximum of 8 total actions during a turn, provided they have a full party. However, what truly makes the system great is that enemies abide by the exact same rules that you do, and they can exploit your weaknesses just as well as you can exploit theirs. So it's optimal for you to work around this by using the multiple tools at your disposal to maximize your turn economy while minimizing the enemies. While Mainline SMT has largely stuck to the press turn system introduced in Nocturne, spin-off titles and subseries have taken the concept and expanded them to forge their own identities. Most notably, the Persona series starting with 3 introduces one mores where striking a weakness or landing crits knock down an enemy and give the party member who knocked them down an additional follow-up action. Additionally, Persona 5 introduced the concept of baton passing, where a party member who just got a one more can instead pass their turn to someone else, and then they'll deal increased damage per how many times the baton has been passed. But what about the various methods you can use to gain more turns? Well, let's talk about that next with damage types. Within SMT games, there are two main sources of damage, physical and magic attacks. Physical attacks scale off strength, and tend to deal more damage than magic. However, this comes with two downsides. First is that physical attacks require HP, or health points, in order to be used, and they also need to land critical hits to gain more actions. Magic, meanwhile, can more consistently generate press turns through striking weaknesses. They use up a party member's stamina, also called MP or SP, and scale off the magic stat. Magic also has multiple variations. The four tetra elements present in every SMT game are fire, ice, electric, and wind. If an enemy looks like they use fire, then chances are they're weak to ice. Or if there's an electric user, then it's a safe bet they're weak to wind. There's also the matter of Hama and Mudo type skills. In older SMT games, these types of magic would give odds to instantly kill the enemies, with the odds sometimes getting as high as 60%. However, Atlas have lately strayed away from pure instant kills. In SMT5, for example, Hama and Mudo skills only insta kill when striking a weakness, and in every Persona game since 5, Light and Dark are now their own elemental damage types with Hama and Mudo being separate insta-kills. Finally, there are Almighty attacks. These are magic attacks that will never be blocked by an enemy, at the cost of never hitting a weakness either. So essentially, Almighty attacks are raw damage. 
While the main Megiddo line of Almighty skills tend to be pretty weak in the player's hands, and the Drain line of skills are mostly pretty bad, Atlas loves to make an ally signature move Almighty. And these tend to be some of the strongest attacks in the game, but more on unique skills later. Circling back to physical, their utility lies in critical hits. These act the same as weakness hits, however whether or not they land are dependent on an individual's luck stat. This incentivizes a high risk, high reward strategy, as you'll be rolling for luck in combination with sacrificing health, but you'll also be able to deal some of the highest damage in these games. Now that we've talked about the basics and attack types, I want to go into the other most defining aspect of SMT combat, buffs and debuffs. In most other RPGs, buffs and debuffs rarely make a difference. Increasing attack by like, what, 5%? Way too small for my liking. However, SMT is just built differently, and buffs and debuffs can make or break a boss fight. SMT games typically have three main buff types. Tarukaja and Tarunda increase and decrease attack power, Rakukaja and Rakunda increase and decrease defense, and Sukukaja and Sukunda increase and decrease hit and evasion rate. Attack and defense should be self-explanatory. At max buffs, you'll deal more damage and take less damage. However, accuracy and evasion is a bit more complicated. Those are the odds that you'll hit your target, and the odds that you'll be able to dodge an attack, both of which are determined by the agility stat. The effectiveness of Suku type buffs can vary wildly between entries being barely noticeable in the Persona series and THE most important buff type in Nocturne, but overall it's a great stat to ensure victory. There are also two more buff types that are used semi-infrequently. In older SMT titles like Nocturne and DDS, physical and magic attack buffs were split into two separate types. Taru type buffs worked on physical attacks, and Makakaja and Makanda increase and decrease magic attack power. However, modern SMT games have consolidated this to just Taru type buffs. Then there are the skills Rebellion and Revolution, which independently increase crit rate, the former doing so on one target, and the latter doing so for the entire field. These skills are more common in the Persona series, but they're nonetheless amazing. Next, I'm going to rapid fire some smaller points before moving on to the final topic. So let's go. Status ailments. Status ailments are a type of skill that can inflict a negative effect on you or a given target. The most common types of ailments are Dizzy, which tanks accuracy, Poison, which does percent damage over time, Sleep, which puts you to sleep, Charm, where you can ignore orders, attack an ally, or heal the enemy, Confusion, which is like Charm, but you just mainly throw away money, and Mute which locks access to all skills besides basic attacks and items. There are more examples, but these are just the core ones you'll see in most every mainline game. Resistances Just because you're weak or vulnerable to something doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Your weaknesses can actually be patched up through passives. Resists plug up the weakness and cut its damage by 50%, nulls completely block the type, drains make you heal off that damage type, and repels send the attack back at the enemy. Additionally, nullifying or dodging an attack takes away two press turns, while draining or repelling an attack completely ends the turn. Single versus all versus multi-target. This just describes how certain attacks behave. Single target hits one enemy. All targets tend to be weaker, unless you play Persona 2, but have the benefit of hitting all enemies. And multi-target attacks hit multiple times but tend to be random, making them not as reliable. However, don't completely discount them, as they can be some of the strongest attacks in the game, like Yoshitsune's Hasotobi or Agrid's Queen's Decree. Skill Tiering As the games go on, the strength of skills rank up through tiering. The three main tiers are weak, medium, and heavy damage. So for example, the weakest single target fire attack is Agi, then it tears up to Agi Lao, and then finally Agi Dine. There's also sometimes a fourth tier, called Severe, or even sometimes a 
fifth called Colossal, but these are the three main types you'll see. Charge and Barrier Effects Charge effects are similar to buffs, except they're static multipliers. The two most common types are Charge, which works on physical attacks, and Concentrate, which works on magic. Barrier effects, meanwhile, protect a user from an oncoming effect. Blocks have the ability to nullify an attack, Tetracon erects a barrier that repels a physical attack, and Makarcon erects a barrier that repels a non-almighty magic attack. Unique Skills These are special skills that are custom made for a specific character. Common examples are Yoshitsune's Hasotobi and Alice's Die For Me. Mainline SMT tends to be a lot more experimental with the types of unique skills you'll see, like Nahobiho's Jack Tempest, a multi-hit ice attack that scales off strength instead of magic, and does more damage on crits. And with the lightning round done, let's talk about the last core aspect of SMT combat. Passives. Passives, or non-active skills, are those that provide a variety of bonuses to your build. I could go over them broadly, but there are so many cool ones that I want to list them individually. Starting with... Resistance Passives. As stated previously, these can be used to patch up any weaknesses you have. However, when building your party, always prioritize a physical resistance or immunity. This is so critical hits can become a non-issue. Damage Increases As the name suggests, these boost the damage of their corresponding elements. In most games, these exist as boosts and amps. Boosts give anywhere from a 20 to 25% increase to damage, and amps give anywhere from a 35 to 50% increase. Boosts and Amps stack multiplicatively, so in Persona 5 Royal, having a Luck Boost and a Luck Amp will give a combined 87% increase to damage. These exist for all elements, physical, and even sometimes healing and almighty. Crit Boosts There are actually two types of crit passives, those that increase crit rate, or the chances that you'll land a critical hit, and crit damage, which is less common but does exactly what you think. Physical skills tend to have low base crit rates unless specified otherwise, so these skills can help a lot in getting those numbers even higher. I also want to give an honorable mention to the skill Sharp Student, which decreases the likelihood of getting crit. Ailment Boosts and Resistances Just like crit boosts, these should be self-explanatory. Ailment Boosts increase the likelihood of inflicting an ailment, and Ailment Resistances decrease the odds of getting inflicted by one. It's also important to note that Hama and Mudo can also sometimes get boosts, which when put on someone like Alice, the results can be absolutely amazing to watch. Endure and Enduring Soul These act as extra lives. Endure makes it so you survive a lethal attack at 1 HP, and Enduring Soul provides you at full HP. Both of these skills stack, so in most games, you get two extra lives before game over. Counters these skills give a percentage-based chance to counter a physical attack with either a weak, medium, or heavy physical attack, or repel a physical attack right back at the enemy. Passive Regeneration These typically come in two forms, Regenerate and Invigorate, and Life and Mana Aid. The first set gives a slight amount of HP and MP recovered during battle. Regenerate is percentage-based HP recovery, and Invigorate gives a static amount of MP back. The aid skills, meanwhile, give a slight amount of HP and MP back after battle, but honestly, unless it's Victory Cry, these skills are never worth having. And finally, Traits. First introduced in Persona 5 Royal, and then making their way into Persona 3 Reload and Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, traits are special passives that are unique to an individual character. These skills in particular can make for some of the most busted characters in the series, including, but not limited to, Izanagi no Okami Pikoro, Junpei na Aikrit Iori, and Masakado. When combined, passives are what truly make a character overpowered. A very recent example of this is in Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance with the Strategize Squad. This combination of demons enable party-wide buffs, enemy debuffs, and unlimited turns. 
if swapped out for Masakado with both Almighty Boosters, all Crit Boosters, and the Charge Effect in Paley's Glory, along with his trait Scarlet Blade, you'll deal enough damage to kill the hardest enemy in the game, the Demi Fiend, in a single turn. Alright, we've reached the end of general combat, but this guide wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about one of, if not the most defining traits of SMT gameplay. Negotiation and Fusion These are methods in which you can obtain party members. The demons in this franchise can be recruited in two different ways. Negotiation and Fusion By answering the correct dialogue prompts, and by giving demons items and money, they'll join your party. However, this method is only really used in the early game, as a lot of the time, the demons have very fickle personalities. Even if you answer everything correctly, and give them everything they want, they can just turn around and say, and then just fuck off, leaving you with less than what you started with. However, the objectively better method for team building is demon fusion. Fusion is the process of taking two or more demons and fusing them to create a stronger one, with the results having higher stats and skills they otherwise wouldn't learn. Once fused or recruited, demons can then be saved into a compendium to be summoned for later use. While that's just the basics of fusion, each entry in the series introduces something unique to make the process even more fulfilling. Most famously, the Persona series rewards you with additional level ups for demons based on how much you form bonds with the characters in the game. It's kind of the hook of doing the social sim content from a gameplay perspective. But in terms of mainline, one of my favorite fusion mechanics is SMT5's Reverse Compendium Fusion, which enables recipe generation for the number of demons you have in the compendium instead of what you just have on hand. And with that, I think that'll do it for today's guide video. I hope you all enjoyed as I had a ton of fun making it, but most importantly, thank you all so much for helping me reach 1000 subscribers. Over a year ago now, I began uploading content with my FNAF timeline, and while that video didn't really perform as well as I hoped, the subsequent video on Soul Hackers 2 gained a lot more attention and mostly praise. Now fast forward to today where I've gained a sizable following and uploaded all sorts of content from guides, long form reviews, and even some fun challenge runs. I honestly never imagined I'd reach this point as fast as I did, and I have all of you to thank for it. Thank you all so much, and I hope you're looking forward to what I have in store. Until next time, this is Jaffinator, signing off.